Cleanup is mindless work, but that's when I reflect on what went well and what didn't. I like putting away the tools, oiling the machines, and sweeping the floor. Mostly I think about what I'd do differently next time. Limitations in my tools or environment really stand out, and I like to address those things before jumping into the next piece of work. Now that FreeCAD 0.19 is released, I kind of feel like I'm in that phase. Lately I've been thinking a lot about the right way to do things in FreeCAD Path. And I'm thinking about this like a developer, so I'm considering the right way to build the user interface and the right way to organize the code. But I'm also considering you know, the right way to do things from a user's point of view. Like, what's the right way to set up a Path job? A member of the FreeCAD community, Flowey, and I have been talking about collaborating on a project. He's got a great YouTube channel. In fact, he's got two YouTube channels. Flowey's Corner is his German channel, and FreeCAD Academy is the English equivalent. But he doesn't do much with the PATH workbench. When he suggested designing a part and having me build it, I thought it'd be a good topic for a video about basic PATH setup. But the more I thought about this, the more I realized that there's a lot of considerations that go into how a job should be configured. So I'm going to show what I'm thinking about while setting up a job for this particular part. Designing something is one thing. Actually making it is entirely another. Most CNC hobbyists probably spend most of their time in the prototype phase. After all, if you only need one part, well, that's basically a prototype. It doesn't really matter how you get it as long as you can get it made. Also, if you're a hobbyist making your own stuff, you're probably thinking about the manufacturability of the part while you're designing it. Things you're thinking about during the prototype phase include you know, how you're going to hold the material and what the order of operations are and also you know, any special tooling you need to make those features. Thus, the goal of the prototype phase is to make a part that works. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it will validate that the design is correct, and it'll also help you start working out the order of operations necessary to make the part. So let's assume that we are starting the prototype process, and this is our first look at Flowey's part. Now, he's modeled this um, in, the, in this orientation, so this is the, the front face of the part. And um, this is a, a grind plate for an inline roller skate. At first glance, this is a relatively simple part. It's uh, 142 millimeters by 23 millimeters and about 6 millimeters thick. Uh, I think this is intended to be made out of a durable plastic like Delrin or high-density polyethylene. All of the features appear to be on the front side. The back is just flat, so I should be able to do this with a single-sided setup, just, just one setup in path. It has these stepped pockets, including uh, holes that go all the way through the model. The profile is relatively simple, and then it has this chamfer feature on this bottom edge. And this is going to be a bit of a problem. Um, looking at the model, I think that what he did was applied a chamfer to the bottom edge and then came in and applied this fillet afterwards. And you see that it, it gives this inconsistent angle. So at, at this point, the, uh, the angle is the same as the chamfer, but over here the angle uh, down is, is, is uh, almost 90 degrees. So probably what I will have to do is email Flowey and see if we can revise the design uh, and, and just continue this chamfer all the way up to, uh, to the corner. Also, PATH doesn't have a chamfer operation that can work on an angled face like this. Uh, that's a feature I would like to add, but we don't have it yet. Uh, we can achieve an angled face like that using the deburr operation, uh, but deburr likes to work on a selected edge, not a face. So what I will probably do is switch back to this step of the model and then apply the fillets to the corners and then do the, uh, uh, the chamfer all the way around. 
Now that's the prototype part that we're going to end up with, but again, I'd want to uh, work directly off the raw edges and not off these chamfered faces. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm actually going to remove this uh, chamfer step here. And uh, in my job setup, this is what the model is going to look like. And then I'll just select these edges for the chamfer step. Now in the path workbench, I'll create the job by selecting my model and creating the job using a template that I have for cutting HDPE. The first thing that's wrong is that the part is oriented incorrectly. Again, this was modeled as the front, but I need it to be top when it's on the mill. So I can select an edge uh, from the model and press the Z axis button and that should rotate it uh, so that the, the uh, face that I want is pointed up. I'm going to use the model's bound box and refresh it. And uh, looking at the front of this, uh, you'll see that the bound box is padded out by one millimeter uh, top and bottom. And I don't want to do that. I want it at zero because I'm going to plane the stock to the exact thickness that I need before I mount it on the mill. I do need to extend the model or the, the stock around the model by about 10 millimeters in every direction so that I've got room for the tool to move around uh, during the profile. And finally, I need to set this back corner to be the origin because I'm going to align that point with the back left corner of the mill vise. I'll turn off the model and turn on the model inside the job and the stock. I also need to add a couple more tools uh, that I don't have in my template. I'm going to use a quarter inch uh, four flute chamfer tool and a quarter inch two flute uh, cutter. The job is going to have four operations in it. We'll use a quarter inch uh, cutter for an adaptive clearing of the first step in the, uh, in the recess. And then we'll switch to an eighth inch cutter and cut the lower step. I'd like to use a quarter inch cutter, but there isn't quite enough room in there for the uh, quarter inch cutter to do the adaptive move. So we could either do a different kind of operation or use a smaller tool, which I've elected to do here. Next we need to do a profile and that's going to require some holding tags and we'll switch back to the quarter inch tool for the profile operation. And finally, we'll run our deburr uh, operation to create the chamfer around the entire top perimeter. Going through my scrap bin, I found an old HDPE cutting board. I cut it to dimension on the table saw and then ran it through a thickness planer to get it to the required thickness, 6 millimeters. I touched off the back left corner of the mill vise and set that as the origin point to match how I set up the job. Then I mounted the stock and aligned it with that corner. Next I probed the top of the stock and touched it off so that Z is zero. The job has a runtime of about five minutes, I'll speed it up here. The feeds and speeds aren't optimized, so it's fouling up with chips, but the cutting edges are staying clear. I did a tool change to my chamfer tool, which is a quarter inch four flute, and then a tool change back to the two flute quarter inch for the final profile.
The part breaks easily out of the remaining stock and it's easy to clean up the holding tags with a razor blade. Well that's the prototype. The part actually looks really good and if I was just making a one-off for my own use that would probably be good enough. Uh, but looking closer at it there's a few things that are not perfect. Uh, for one in the in the back right corner uh, there's a little nick. If you slow down the footage of the profile cut you can see the part rock slightly right at the very end as it's only supported by the holding tags. So I think I would increase the size of the holding tags. Uh, big ones aren't really any harder to clean up than small ones. Also, the order of operations can be improved. If I do the deburr operation first, then I can avoid one tool change. Also, I used an adaptive to clear the top part of the step, but uh, the HDPE was cutting so well with the two flute cutter that I think I can clear that pocket with just a straight uh, pocket operation and shave off almost a minute of the runtime. So that's fine if I'm only making one, but what if I want to make a couple of them? In this phase, we aren't so concerned with testing whether the model is correct. We're really looking at whether the process for making the model uh, is correct and produces the desired tolerance and surface finish repeatedly. Now, this doesn't mean that the model won't change during this phase. Uh, we may decide to add features to the model to make it easier to manufacture. So the goals in this phase are going to be hitting the required tolerance consistently, improving the surface finish, and eliminating as many manual steps as possible. I got the new version of the file from Flowey, and uh, one thing that changed was the thickness of the part, and this will have an implication, as we'll see in a few minutes. I cut the original prototype with the part in a uh, horizontal, uh, kind of a landscape uh, position. My first thought was to cut multiple parts by turning it 90 degrees, but the jaw on my vise won't open wide enough to do that. So about the only thing that I can do is cut a large piece of stock and cut as many as I can uh, stacked one over the other uh, in the same horizontal configuration. It looks like I should be able to cut four parts at once. Rather than create an array of the part and set up the job to cut uh, all of them, I'm going to assign uh, four different work coordinate systems, G54, G55, G56, and G57. And then I'll only have to modify my original job uh, to output the g-code to cut the same part in all of the coordinate systems. Just like before I touched off the back left corner of the vise and then I ran uh, a little script that I hand wrote that uh, offsets g55, 6, and 7 by 35 millimeters, uh, 70, and 105 relative to the g54 coordinate system. Then I just had to go back into the job to the output tab and uh, enable the other work coordinate systems. I made sure to turn on order by tool so that all the work is done in all the coordinate systems before the tool change is called for. I prepared and mounted a new piece of stock and started the job running and at first everything was running well uh, but towards the end of the first profile the material started to pull out of the vise and I had to abort the job. Looking at how the parts are laid out in the stock you can see that with the holding tags on the ends of the parts as the individual parts are cut loose uh, the entire piece is only supported by the outside perimeter. Also since Flowey's design went from 6 millimeters to 5 millimeters thick the stock was even less rigid and I saw some bowing in the vise if I tightened it too much. I reworked the job to put the holding tags uh, on a couple of places on the long edge of the part. This gives some structure all the way through the Y direction and, and allows the vise to hold a little bit better. I also changed the tool that I was using for the profile. Before I was using a two flute quarter inch cutter and I changed that to an eighth inch cutter uh, that'll put less lifting force on the stock and also leave behind more material so hopefully the stock will stay more rigid. 
If I was really setting this up to cut a lot of these, I would either look at doing the interior pockets using the eighth inch cutter or uh, find a more rigid holding solution so that I could use the quarter inch for the cutout uh, and save the tool change that's now required. But running this job, I ended up with four parts that look really good. It took just a little bit of handwork to remove the holding tags and deburr the parts. So this was a really fun project. I had a good time working with Flowey and I encourage you to check out his channel. I will put a link to his video up above. And uh, if you want to see more of this sort of thing, please leave a comment. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.